The following may contain language that is not suitable for all audiences. Thank you for joining us once again here on the Low Fact Podcast. <laughs> and the bunker. Dave and Matt in, uh, I guess, the first week of our mini-teen shows. Yes, the mini-teen series. I like that. So I really liked your quote at the end. The one that I think Ben Franklin said? Mm-hmm. Because I think, I think it really is something that is that people are starting to experience even just at a very kind of, what would it be, micro level, macro level? I don't know. People are experiencing it because... If they're experiencing it themselves, it would be a micro level. They're like, I want to feel safe, right? So I'm looking to I'm looking to the authorities to tell me what to do. But after a couple of weeks, people are starting to go a little nutty. I think people are going nutty in the first week. Oh, you think, well, so what's the second week? Second week is... <laughs> <laughs> Second week is just more nuttiness. Second week is that Batman movie when the uh, the anchor can't use the uh, the clean, the makeup products and they just get rattier and rattier. We're already in the second week though. It's, a th- well, it's almost the third week now. Is it? Yeah, it's fourteen days. Has it already been two weeks? Yep, it's already been two weeks. Are you sure? It might be twelve days. Okay, so maybe we're at the end of the second week now. Well, I don't know what it is. It's either twelve or fourteen days. But you know, I mean. People have thought that there's a way to do something, and they've got all the guns. So, you know. Well, they don't have all the guns. Oh, you know they closed all the gun shops in L.A. County? They opened back up again, didn't they? Oh, did they? Yeah. So that that, that lasted, what, less than a day? Well, I think a lawyer, the city councilor, somebody from the city councilor's office said, mm, I don't think you can do that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. And is it true that they released a whole lot of criminals or is that just probably the spin no I mean, probably i heard i heard something about spin that they were they were they were decriminalizing certain uh certain crimes in san francisco or northern in that in that area up there like making certain shoplifting things not a felony and so then all that really did was just get people with with tons of misdemeanors because they would you know go and steal just under that amount and this is this is like an organized crime type thing it's not oh it's not just one person it might be it might be i don't know but because i'm the way i am and i don't really peruse the news uh you know (laughs) i'm like uh i'm like that joke about uh telling a rumor which is what you know at first it might start off you know we're making a jailbreak at two o'clock pass it on uh-huh. and then by the time it gets the 15th person you're like Peng- penguin red red baron falcon 6 a.m <laughs> uh, no i just i th- i think i think maybe the way things have been the last couple of weeks maybe it's a good taste of what it might like be living under a dictatorial regime I don't think this is anything like living under a dictatorship. Well, some a- elements of it, like the the empty shelves and the lining up. There are no the, empty shelves. There were for a little while, like for a few days. Yeah, and you know, it's because people decide that they need toilet paper for some odd reason, like it's going to be currency. I don't know. Um, but no, a small taste of living under a dictatorial or a traditionally communist regime would be nothing on the shelves. And then you can't leave your, and then what that, like some of the shit they did in China and Wuhan. Even that, I have, I have, I have no idea. There's so you no, see, th- you don't get to see this stuff. This there, video there's, on Twitter. There's no way for me to, to independently verify the veracity of anything that I see. Well, that's true. I mean, these videos could be from any time and anywhere. I mean, you know, you can't necessarily be a totally trusting person. And you also can't necessarily be a totally distrusting person. So, you know, in some cases, they're judgment calls, right? You're going to have to be like, well, do I believe this person or do I not believe that person? That's a, that's an individual judgment call. And I think that for most people, 
that instrument's not great. <laughs> it's okay, right? It's okay. You, you can, you can, you can, you know, it's okay, meaning almost half the time you're probably right. Now, you think that instrument is pure instinctual, like gut, gut check, response? It's an instinctive thing based on a whole bunch of other stuff. You know, what we call instinct is actually learned. So we're doing, we, we are doing an assessment, but it's not like, well, yeah. you're not like, well, A and B and C and D equals. Yeah, it's, probably this is right. It's, a, it's an assessment of stuff that we can't particularly do in our own head. So I, I see some of the video out of China and I say, you know what, this probably did go, this is probably stuff that went on. This is probably real video of what's going on right now. But isn't, don't they have, don't they not have Twitter in China? Yeah. They, well, they, apparently they shut down 300 cell phone, 300 million cell phones or something like that. No, I mean, is, is Twitter allowed in China? No, Twitter isn't allowed, but this is video that people shot on their cell phones that's found its way onto Twitter. Okay. Probably maybe somebody sent it to somebody who's on Twitter. I don't know. Mm, okay. Well, that makes sense. But yeah, um, I mean, but you know, it was like, how's people being locked in their houses? Um, well, that's all stuff that, that we know is true. Disorder stuff starting to kind of break down a little bit. Uh, I don't know why stuff would break down in the most authoritarian, one of the most authoritarian places. Apparently they opened all the, all their, uh, movie theaters and then they closed them again. Why? Probably because the virus is not under control, maybe. Did I mean, that's speculation. Did they ever claim that the virus was under control? Yeah, remember they said they said they went from like oh, 400,000 new cases to we only got one. 400,000? There was like 400,000 new cases on one day, and then the next day it was like, we have it under control, and now there's only been one new case. You I didn't think see the graph. I think your numbers are wrong. Oh, you think the four hundred thousand number might be wrong? Well, isn't aren't isn't the United States supposed to have the highest number of cases? Yeah, it is. Isn't it somewhere in the hunt in the one hundred thousand range? Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. So my numbers must be wrong. Your numbers. Maybe it was forty thousand and then one. Or maybe your num- Or maybe you inadvertently came upon the correct number. <laughs> <laughs> of what of actual cases in By virtue of being a dumbass. You know. I I wouldn't put it past the Chinese government. I mean they have a billion people, right? I think they have more than a billion people. So four hundred thousand new cases wouldn't be an outlandish number. I think they have four times the population of the United States. So four hundred thousand would not be an outlandish number. Probably not. Based on the population density, I would think I would think that it's much higher. But it, then, the real question in my mind isn't isn't how many people are going to die from it. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is serious. Yeah, it is. It, it's pr- it's probably serious, but I don't know how serious it is. And, you know, it's not like I'm going to ask an epidemiologist because, you know, just because someone's an expert in something, all they have is more knowledge <laughs> and more experience about that one thing. Okay. So am I going to argue with a doctor <laughs> about, you know, certain... Medical things, maybe because that doctor might not be up to date on the most, you know, the most current stuff. Right. But generally, a doctor is going to know more about medicine than I am. One would hope. Oh, and uh, and we can and, I, and we can leave with this funny statistic that I found out: uh, the number of doctors in the United States being like a low number. Uh huh. Artificial. Really. Yeah. The number of doctors is limited to the number of residency spots there are in the United States, which is basically controlled by Medicare. Uh, what does that mean? That means that if you if they let anyone who wanted to go to med school, if they set a certain bar, okay, for acceptance into med school, that didn't that didn't uh, that didn't take into account the number of spots of residencies there were in the United States. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. Then there pro- more people would go to med school. You mean if there was a lower bar, more people would go? It's not a lower bar. The number the number that they set is really based on payments to hospitals from Medicare. Why? Because hospitals are notoriously cheap. Or because hospitals are just are made up of people, just like everybody else, and they want to turn a profit. Oh. So they use slave labor in the form of newly graduated medical students. They get paid by somebody else. 
Oh my goodness. They get paid by the government. I, now I could have this totally wrong. So if you've ever gone through a residency or a matching program or you know anything about this, correct me. But like I said, I don't peruse stuff. I just kind of scan it. And then I make up my own assumptions. So, you know. <laughs> so the low fact is not the right name for this podcast then. Highly speculative, maybe. <laughs> But yeah, so the, the number of, the number of spots in, re- in med school is basically based on the number of residencies that there are in the United States. Which is dictated by? By Medicare payments. Wow. When, where did you see this little gem? I don't know. I scan a lot of, I scan a lot more stuff now that the, that the California government is trying to keep me from socializing, but jokes on them. I have no friends. So I, so this mini teen has not hit my social life at all one bit. That's a good thing. Maybe we can continue with that. Okay. So thank you very much for listening in. And you know, if I say something or if Matt says something that's totally off the wall or incorrect, correct us. Yeah. We, and all the info will be coming up. We don't mind. But anyway, hopefully, um, if you're stuck somewhere and can't go out, this is a good way to spend 10 minutes of your day. All right, thanks for tuning in to Low Fat Podcast. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. Just search Low Fact. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Low Fact Podcast. Uh, if you want to chat to us, send us some comments, or have us talk about some things, just uh, send an email to lowfactpodcast at gmail.com. You can also follow us on our Twitter and Instagram pages at Low Fat Podcast. And also check out uh, Andy's pages where he mixes our beats uh, Twitter and Instagram at Fantasy Beat and you can also find his wicked ass shit on SoundCloud at uh, Artificial